This one deserved my eggs. Hello, welcome. I'm Hannah and I'm so excited because today we're ice watching a brand new Luxie collection. I never know what to expect from these collections. They tend to send an email out the night before. Maybe they'll give like a little sneak peek of the shadows, but even from the sneak peeks, it's hard to tell what you're actually going to get in your hands. And to be honest, I don't try to figure it out that much because I know I'm just gonna buy the whole collection <laughs> and ice watch it for you. But I'm very pleased with what I've seen so far. These look pretty sparkly. In fact, I'd say four look really sparkly. One looks like quite sparkly, not quite as much as the other four, but you know, enough. And I think the other two that don't look as sparkly are the two that were sneak peeked on their Instagram. And I think those two are particularly shifty. So I kind of have high hopes right now. I feel like this is gonna be a nice batch of shadows. I'm excited. I'm always excited when it's time to ice watch Luxie shadows, but I think we should just dive right into it. Some of these colors also right off the bat do remind me of other Luxie shadows that I already have, so I'll definitely be doing comparisons at the end. I'm the most excited for this one down here, this pink. We'll talk about it. I'll give you the little close up when we get to it, but that looks like the Hannah-iest of Hannah shadows that there are. I'm going to start with the two more like golden looking ones. I don't have any eye primer on as usual and I'm just going to use my fingers. This first one is Gold Rush. It's described as a warm gold shade with shifts of yellow, pinkish red, and purple. I know better than to believe everything that their descriptions say, but that sounds cool. It does look like an interesting neutral shadow. I don't know if I can capture it on camera, but looking at it in person, I do see like a coolness to it that you wouldn't expect from straight on. Oh, this this is that feeling of a lot of newer Luxie shadows feel a little bit more emollient and it picks up quite thickly on my finger, which I do like. I prefer a thicker shadow to a thinner shadow usually. And it spreads out really nicely, looks really shiny. I like this. I'm excited about this, but my first impression is it doesn't feel that special from a lot of other more neutral shadows that they've had recently. And in fact, I feel like other recent shadows that come to mind, like Champagne Punch and Jawbreaker Jelly Bean, I can never remember which one's more green. I like that one more, but the one that's less green, I feel like is similar to this. And those shadows, I think, have a cooler sparkle to them, which I prefer. If you're looking for that type of shadow, but with more of like a yellow warmth to it, then here it is. This is exactly for you, but I think it's a little bit less for me. But that's just color. Formula-wise, I think it feels really nice. I think it feels consistent to some of the more high-impact formulas that they've been doing recently. I see like a mauve base to it, and it does look like that yellow almost goes green. Yeah, I think it's a nice solid shadow. Gold Rush. I'll give you the other angle too once I have the other one on, just in case there's anything anything a little sneaky going on in there with the shifts. The next one is Honeydew. To compare this to the previous one, they're quite similar, but Gold Rush looks more yellow, a little bit lighter, and Honeydew definitely looks a little more green. It does look kind of interesting. I feel like this angle, I can see like pink mixed into there. It's described as a golden bronze with shifts of green and brown. So they're not claiming to have any pink, Maybe what I think is pink is really a brown, but looks really sparkly. It feels a little bit thinner than the previous one. Sometimes I do feel like Luxie shadows crease more than other shadows that I have. It's not always a problem for me, and I often don't need my makeup to be bulletproof for a really long time, but I do suspect that the ones that feel a little bit thinner probably are less likely to crease. Okay. Yeah, these are very different now that they're on the eyes. This one's much more of like a mid-tone. I definitely see that like bronzy warm brown base with golden bronzy sparkles on top. I really don't see green when it's on the eye. Yeah, this shadow doesn't particularly excite me. I think it looks like a nice neutral, but it doesn't feel unique enough to stand out in my mind. But it is a solid formula, and if you've been looking for this type of neutral shadow from Luxie at their price point, then this might be the one for you. I think of older shadows that I have that are similar to this. I think of Adorbs and I think Honey Pot, but I don't even know if those are still available. So this might be like the newer version of those older shadows. I'm not seeing anything too surprising when I change up the light. They both look nice, sparkly, neutral. 
This next one is called Groovy Baby, and I believe this is one of the two that had been sneak peeked by the brand. It's described as a grassy green shade with shifts of pink, yellow, and gold. And the swatch that they have on the website looks really nice. It doesn't look quite as sparkly in the pan as other shadows do, but if it can give me that level of shiftiness, I'll take it. I also really like that tone of grass green. This one feels more hard pressed. It feels like a little bit thicker. It's definitely a formula of theirs that I like less. Oh, and this looks really dingy on the eyes. Huh. Okay. I mean, I, I do see the shiftiness and I could see why they'd come out with the shadow. It's interesting. And I definitely don't have another shadow this color. That pink is really prevalent. It's kind of like a salmon-y pink. The base is definitely a grass green, and I can see when it's out of the light, it is quite bright. And then there's also very cool green sparkle in there. The shadow isn't as high impact, but I have found recently I've been enjoying shadows that aren't as high impact. I've been kind of more willing to try out things in my collection that I've written off in the past, even like going into a palette and using a shimmer that I've previously deemed as like not shimmery enough for me. So I feel like I could be open to it. On top of that, like I did in that video about my signature look that I posted last week, I took a base shadow, I used a matte as a base, and then I put an iridescent shimmer on top of it. And I feel like in place of a matte base, I could use a shadow like this and then top it with a more sparkly, transparent shade. So I am open to this. And because I like the colors in it, I'm definitely intrigued to experiment and see what I can get with it. I could also see it working well for the lower lash line. So if you get this, don't expect it to be as high impact as some of their other more sparkly shadows are. But if you like the color enough, I think there's things that can be done. On the other eye, I'm going to pop on Razzle Dazzle. This one doesn't look quite as sparkly as the most sparkly shadows in this collection, but it does look more sparkly than this one here. It also looks to me, we'll compare it, but they've had two shadows recently that were really similar. I think the first one was First Class. It might have been like a year ago that they did First Class, and I have since decluttered it, but more recently they've come out with Hunky Dory, which I do still have so I can compare. Both of those shadows were not that shimmery, but I wonder if this is like the more shimmery version of that color. And for that reason, I'm really excited to see what this one looks like. It's described as a light grayish purple with shifts of blue, gold, green, and pink. Maybe this formula is like the compromise between the more shimmery ones and the more shifty ones. Yeah, weird feeling. This one also feels thick. It feels a little bit more dry. Like, I feel like recently they've been more leaning into that emollient formula, and I think the only one that was really like that so far was the first one, Gold Rush, because this is definitely more of, like, a dry, thick pickup. Maybe it's not too unlike the formula of Hunky Dory and First Class. Okay. Interesting. I can't tell yet if it's the formula or the color that makes this less high impact on me. I mean, I do think that the light teal to it isn't as sparkly as they sometimes are. I also think there's like a browny mauvey base that blends in with my eyelid pretty well. But I do think this is the type of shadow that is versatile in that it's more interesting than plopping any basic champagne onto your eyelid, but I feel like it's still office appropriate. It's not going to be the first thing someone notices about you. Maybe they'll be talking to you for a while and then they'll be like, hey, I like your eyeshadow, you know? And for people that really stay in that neutral zone, I feel like this type of shade is a good way to try to dip your toe out of it without like, you know, falling into the, <laughs> falling into the ocean. So I do like this. I was hoping it would be a little bit more sparkly, but I do like it. And I feel like with the shadows I'm currently gravitating towards, I could imagine myself using this. Yeah, we got green and shifty and we got light. This looks a lot less teal out of the direct light actually, but just looks like a nice shifty kind of wet effect neutral. The next one is Shimmy, and this one's a light yellow. I think this is the other one that they had sneak peeked on their Instagram. And I do see similarities between this and the grass green groovy baby from before. 
in the pan, the formula looks the same, so I expect it will feel similar. And also the qualities of the swatch seem similar too. It definitely has a very bright base with a lighter, pinkier shimmer to it. It's described as a bright yellow with shifts of pink and turquoise. Oh, this one's much softer than the last one. They're, they're always keeping me on my toes. Much softer. Yeah, I'm so surprised by how different the formula feels. This is cute and it's way more sparkly than the last one also. That yellow is so bright and even the like the light part of it also is also really bright. The pink shift that I saw in their swatch is definitely not as prevalent here, but that might be something that comes up in different light. This reminds me a lot of Terra Moon's Light Speed, but I don't think Light Speed goes this bright either, so I feel like I like this one more. We'll definitely do a comparison though, but I'm I'm into this one. I think this one's really nice. And then next up, the penultimate shadow is called Liquid. This is a bright blue. It's described as a light metallic silvery blue with shifts of gold, green, and purple. This one also looks pretty similar to blues we've seen recently. It does look very shimmery, but it seems very one tone. Let's see. This one's a little bit more of like a rough formula. They've had shadows before like red hot that almost feel like a pressed glitter when you pick it up. This doesn't feel that like large shardy, <laughs> but it does feel like well ground shardy in a way. <laughs> I should stop saying shardy. Yeah, I think this is the type of shadow that if you're sensitive to rougher particles going on your eyes, you might not like. Very high impact. I don't know what to make of this one. Right off the bat, I do think this is different from other light blues that they've had recently because of how high impact it is. Also, the tone of it isn't quite as true blue as I thought it might be from the pan. I think it looks a little bit more turquoise on the eyes. Beautiful shadow though. I feel like this is a, a bang for your buck type of shadow. And it's also nice the differences in formula that they put out sometimes because I feel like some of their more sheer shadows are harder to integrate into looks because you can't layer them as much because they don't have enough pigment on their own. But this is definitely the type of shadow that if you had like a whole matte thing going on and you wanted to like fake a cut crease by putting a shadow over it, this seems to me like it would be pigmented enough to do so and you wouldn't see the matte through it. Just a thought. Not my favorite tone. I think I do prefer more true blues than the turquoise-ness that it's looking like, but I do respect it and I think it's a nice shadow. The yellow is still yellowing and this shadow looks a little bit more dimensional out of the light. I could see the yellow to it. I could see a lighter teal and a little bit more darkness where it's not in the light. Nice. Okay, we're on to the last one and I did put eye primer on for this one because I plan to wear it for the rest of the day. I don't feel like eye primer helps the performance of the swatches. I just feel like it helps it last longer. This last one, I'm so excited about. It looks so sparkly and not just sparkly, but it looks like different colored sparkles in there. It's definitely this kind of mauvey, relaxed pink base to it, and it looks like it has red and blue and silver sparkles in it. We'll see if it actually comes up on the eye, but I'm really intrigued by that. I feel like that's something that more expensive brands have started to do. Like I think of Ice Blink from Chambay SD with Seeking Shifts, and that's something that makes that shadow so special, and I wonder if Luxy at $3 can kind of capture a similar magic to that. So I'm really excited. All of my eggs are in this basket. It's described as a sparkly purple. Huh, I wasn't expecting that. With shifts of red and orange. And I don't know if I said this is called Glitz and Ritz, but this is called Glitz and Ritz. This has a really soft feel. This has a feel similar to that yellow one and definitely a full pigment effect as well. It's very metallic looking. Wow, I like it. I'm surprised that they called this a purple because I feel like the base is kind of like a corally orange and then over here it looks very much like a mid-toned Barbie pink to me, but it's really pretty. Let's do the other eye too. I like it. I like the feel of it. I like it that it's so soft. I wonder if we can see those multicolored sparkles. Do you see them? I can't tell. 
Well, maybe kind of. Like, it's definitely super sparkly. And I think the multicolored sparkles thing isn't something that you see from far away. But I think I can kind of tell there's something interesting going on from close up. I really like this one. This one deserved my eggs. And I'm happy I saved this one to the end so I can make my whole look around it. So I'm gonna do that. We'll be back. We'll talk more thoughts. We'll talk comparisons, all that good stuff. And here is the finished look. It actually has been about two hours since I finished this look. So we can see what two hours of creasing looks like. Not bad. I don't mind this at all. I feel like you can only see that when my eye is like super open, but just like a normal amount of open. Totally fine. So what I did was add a matte from the Kylie Mauves palette into my crease. I did add a little bit more of Ritz and Glitz, Glitz and Ritz, on top of the layer I already had on. My lower lash line, I used a couple of ColourPop mattes, and my inner corner, I used Davina Soleil's, my favorite. And I don't know if the individual sparkle, the like multicolored sparkle, is visible on this camera, but I did take a picture of it that I will insert. In less direct lighting, it is definitely visible and it's so special about this shadow. I love when they add that touch. It's the cherry on top to a color that I already like, a formula that I already like, a price that I already like. Let's switch it up and start with comparisons and then we'll finish with my ranking. So I went through my collection and I grabbed out similar shadows. They're pretty much all Luxy. I feel like that is the most helpful, but of course I would pull out a different brand if I was really inspired and we'll start with one where I did pull out a different brand. The yellow shade, Shimmy. Beautiful, bright yellow base. Pretty sparkle on top. That shade, it just feels so nice. It went on like butter. And I wanted to compare it to Light Speed from Terra Moons. This is also one of the less expensive shades from Terra Moons, but it's still $8, so a lot more. I could tell picking it up, it's less soft, a little bit more chunky. Not like chunky in a sharp way, just more kind of flaky. And the base of it definitely leans a little bit more green. Not enough that I'd call it a green shadow, but just in comparison, the Luxie one's a lot more of like a true yellow. But the shimmer on top, very similar. And I know from experience, Light Speed also has that pinkiness to it that Shimmy does. And then also from Luxie, I grabbed out Margarita. I think this one's from last year. I really like it. They don't do many yellows. And I don't need many yellows, but this is a beautiful shadow. And this one's different because the sparkle on top is also a bright yellow. So it's really just like yellow all over, slightly deeper yellow in the base, yellow in the shimmer, and it doesn't have that same level of pink that Shimmy does. I think Groovy Baby is quite unique in my collection. The bright green in here I feel like is harder to come by. I love the way it shifts. I thought I'd compare it to Morning Rain. Not in color so much, but just kind of in formula or effect. This is one that also is kind of a less shimmery finish, but I like it for my lower lash line. I feel like it's an interesting pop and it goes on a little bit more like a satin. You can see this is like blue to green, but it is a similar tone green base. And I would say the formula is similar. So if you like Morning Rain, you might like Groovy Baby. I also grabbed out Kevin from Odin's Eye. This is the one shadow that I kept from Odin's Eye from my purchase earlier this year. And I think it has a similar tone green to it. Uh, this one's definitely lighter and brighter. I like both of them. They're different enough. I'm happy to have both. But I could also see Kevin pairing nicely with Groovy Baby. I feel like Groovy Baby would make a good like accent or lower lash line for Kevin. Next we have the blue liquid that I was surprised by how teal it is and how intense it is. And I grabbed two Luxie shades that I felt like were a similar depth. This one's Under the Sea, which definitely looks more teal in the pan. And then I have Blue Lagoon, which is a little bit more of a true blue with a pink sparkle to it. And I feel like liquid might be somewhere in between these. Under the Sea and Blue Lagoon. Liquid is definitely the lightest of the three. None are dupes, but definitely in the same ballpark. These two would probably make a nice look together. The next one is Gold Rush, and I grabbed a whole bunch of them to compare for this one because I feel like so many neutrals that they have might be in the same ballpark. Very soft formula. I think this one will have a lot of universal appeal. And looking at it now, I feel like I might have been a little bit too ho-hum about it before because it is 
a beautiful shade. So Until Dawn was an original thought that I had with it, but I think this one is a lot more orangey and a lot more pink. Yeah, I think Until Dawn looks like it's just like those gold flakes that reflect pink. Gold Rush looks more like a mauve base with gold on top of it. I also grabbed out Jelly Bean and Arctic Rose. Jelly Bean is much more pink than I thought and much more cooler in the shimmer. Arctic Rose is the same idea, but the sparkly particles feel finer milled and it makes it look more like a shifty shadow than like a base with sparkle on top, if you know what I mean. Like this doesn't change that much in the light, but Arctic Rose does. I also grabbed Champagne Punch and Oh Bother. Champagne Punch is also much lighter and cooler than I thought, and Oh Bother looks much more similar to Arctic Rose than it does to Gold Rush. So actually, it's interesting, because if you're someone who appreciates the nuances in neutrals, then Gold Rush might be unique to your collection. I just did not think so, based on looking in the pan. Next is the beautiful Glitz and Ritz that I have on my eyes. Beautiful formula, beautiful finish, love the sparkles in it. And it does look quite shifty on my arm in this angle, huh? To compare, I grabbed out Cherry Bomb. This is a shadow that I always forget about, but I love it. You can see that it's darker than Glitz and Ritz's, but it has multicolored sparkle in it as well. So it came to mind when I saw this one. Yeah, it has more fuchsia and it is a little bit darker. I would say if this isn't the type of shade that you tend to reach for and you already have Cherry Bomb, you might not need Glitz and Ritz. But for me, considering this is exactly the type of shade that I like, I'm happy to have both. You can see that the base for Cherry Bomb is just a little bit deeper and the sparkles are more pink and less cool. Next is Razzle Dazzle. Yeah, this shade definitely feels weird, feels thick, but I did like how it looked on my eyes before. And I'm really curious to see how it compares to Hunky Dory. Here's Hunky Dory and here's Razzle Dazzle in the pan. They don't look exactly the same. Like this one looks a little bit more green and Razzle Dazzle looks a little bit more blue, but pretty similar. Hunky Dory also doesn't feel quite as thick when I pick it up. Yeah, I would say Hunky Dory goes a little bit more yellow and Razzle Dazzle's a little bit more cool. The base is also slightly different. I think Hunky Dory's a little bit more brown. Razzle Dazzle has a little bit more berry to it, but overall quite similar. I still like the formula better for Razzle Dazzle, but I wouldn't say run out and buy this one unless Hunky Dory is your favorite shade and your only complaint is it's not more sparkly. But again, Razzle Dazzle is not worlds more sparkly. It's just like one step up. Other shadows from them are like five steps up. I also grabbed Luxy Splash. This is from their previous collection and I don't expect it to be a dupe or anything, but I thought of it similarly because it's also kind of like a dulled down color, but still is way more colorful. And I think you can see actually, I think the sparkles on top of Razzle Dazzle is a little bit similar, but this one has more of a purple base and Razzle Dazzle has more of a neutral base. We're onto the final one, Honey Dew, and I have a lot of comparisons for this. And I'm wondering now if it's going to be the same thing that it was for Gold Rush, where like in my head, every neutral that's similar is the same, but in reality, like it's not, and I can appreciate the differences. Beautiful sparkly shadow. Does look a little flat in the swatch, right? Maybe I'm just all sparkled out. Okay, yeah, two layers brought that to life a little bit more. We're gonna start with the first two that I mentioned before, which were Adorbs and Honey Pot. Adorbs is much darker, but I feel like the base might be kind of similar. Adorbs is definitely in the same ballpark. I'd say it has a deeper base and the sparkle looks very similar, but it's more of like a shifty sparkle than an evenly dispersed sparkle like Honeydew seems to be. Honey Pot is much more warm. Luxie Peacock is pretty similar, but I know this one has more green in the sparkle. Lemonhead from their previous collection is a lot more yellow and lighter. Luxie Social Butterfly is definitely the same vibe and might even be like the better version of Adorbs to be more specific. Starburst is pretty similar, a little bit lighter. 
I'd say Honeydew is right in between these, Social Butterfly and Starburst. Let's just finish off with some quick swatches. I'm just going to rank them in the order that I'm most excited about them because there are so many different little formula differences. But at the end of the day, I feel like my excitement is where like the colors and the formulas meet. And I feel like with the eye swatches, you can make the distinction if you disagree with my list, but also if you have the same taste as me, you might agree with my list and it could be helpful. So Glitz and Ritz is going to be number one. This is like the total package. I like the feel of it. I like the finish of it, the brightness, the color, the multicolored sparkles. I feel like this shadow is going to go down as like one of my Luxy favorites. And that's really exciting. We don't always have one of those in a collection. Next, kind of weird subject to change. I'm going to say Groovy Baby. I'm not usually like a green person, but I am intrigued by this particular shade of grass green. This shadow is definitely unique in my collection, and I'm just curious to find ways that I'm excited to wear it. I think what I said before about layering a more sparkly shade over it, that's probably going to be my first step. Or it's possible also that with my taste kind of changing, I'll just enjoy it on its own because I've realized I don't always need the most high impact sparkle. So I am just excited about that. And I love when Luxie does something different. Next, I'm going to say Razzle Dazzle. Kind of surprising, but again, I feel like I've been wearing more neutral colors recently, but I still want them to be interesting and different. And I think this is just like an easy shadow that I can wear in all different types of scenarios and I can put zero thought into it. And again, it does feel unique in my collection because Hunky Dory is just like not quite enough for me. And this is that little extra boost of enough to make me want to wear it. I'm going to give Shimmy number four. This one's mostly on formula. I just think it's so nice, so soft. I love the brightness to it. And I could definitely imagine using this as like an accent color or again, kind of like a neutral that's a little bit more interesting because I kind of think of yellows as being like one step outside of neutral. And I mean, and the fact that it's like just as good as that Terra Moon shade, that, that tells me everything I need to know. I'm gonna give Gold Rush number five. I don't always gravitate to golds, but I think this is pretty and I think I talked myself into it by seeing how it's like slightly different from other Luxie shadows that I think of very fondly. I really do love my Luxie neutrals and I like that this has the warmth in the base. Number six, I'm gonna give to Honey Dew. I don't think I needed this one considering all of the other similar shadows that I have. And I think when it comes to me grabbing a neutral, I do tend to grab for something lighter over something like this. But maybe that will be the next step of me looking at my makeup differently. Maybe I will try to use a shadow like this and I'll fall in love. I don't know. And number seven, I'm gonna give to Liquid. This collection doesn't have any duds. And the only reason that this one's number seven is just because right now, me doing my makeup, I'm the least likely to grab for like a tealy blue than I am of any of the other shades. But this is like a gorgeous formula. I would just keep in mind that the texture is a little bit harder if you don't like that on your eyelids. But it is a beautiful shadow and I bet there's someone out there that's like been waiting for exactly this. And here it is. It's great. It's only number seven because the other ones are also great and I'm just a little bit more excited to reach for them. Here's those swatches a little bit more up close. I think luxie has been stepping up their game for a while, and I don't know if it's them or my taste or the combination of both, but I feel like this is the first no-dud collection in a little bit, right? Just comes down to differences in preferences if you would want them all or not. But I think if you like the color, if you're open-minded for the application or the feel of it, I think there's some gorgeous shadows in this collection. And I think we covered it. I think that's everything for today. I'm going to try to get this up as soon as possible. I do have three hours of the Bachelorette finale to watch tonight. <laughs> and Davina's doing their live YouTube reveal of their newest collection. But I'll see what I can do. I know, this is important. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And there's always way more makeup content on the way. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.